Ahead on Public Eye. The people who were taking care of her did not know that she was going to die. It was an accident and it was sudden. The Church of Scientology, under fire and under suspicion in the death of Lisa McPherson. Good evening. I'm Brian Dumble. Here's what's happening tonight on Public Eye. She was trying to escape, there's no question about that. When she went to, uh, to the authorities uh, naked, uh, she was looking for help. Lisa McPherson spent 17 days in isolation in the sole care of the Church of Scientology. On the 18th day, Lisa died. Do you think criminal charges should be filed? I definitely do, because I feel like they killed her. Now Lisa's family is challenging the Scientologists in court. There is only one reason that she has for doing this, which is money. The case offers a rare glimpse inside the closed world, a controversial church that is fighting back. I can assure you that the last thing that Lisa McPherson would be doing would be suing her church. Live from CBS News, Public Eye with Bryant Gumbel. Since first attracting attention more than 30 years ago, the tenets of Scientology have been reviled by critics and revered by supporters. Those same supporters have earned a fierce reputation for relentlessly using the courts to defend Scientology, ultimately gaining a tax exempt status to recognize religion. In recent years, the church's profile has been enhanced by association with a variety of Hollywood stars, famous folks who have put a shining face on a self-styled church that's often clouded by secrecy and mistrust. All of which brings us to a lawsuit in Florida, a wrongful death suit that has pitted proponents of Scientology against the family of a young woman who died in the prime of her life. Kristen Jeanette Myers, herself a lawyer, details the sad end of Lisa McPherson. was not rich, famous, or powerful, but in death, Lisa McPherson is grabbing headlines normally reserved for Scientology's celebrity followers. That's because after two years, the death of Lisa McPherson remains to many a mystery. Lisa, a devout Scientologist, spent the last 17 days of her life confined to a room inside this hotel owned by Scientology. Church records show that during that time, Lisa became violent, refusing to eat or sleep. The tragedy has left Lisa's aunt and closest living relative, Del Liebrich, searching for answers. I'm just very unhappy with Scientology. Do you think criminal charges should be filed? I definitely do. I definitely do. Because I feel like they killed her. Lisa's tragic saga began on November 18, 1995. She was driving down this road in Clearwater and got into a minor fender bender. No one was hurt, but as a precaution, paramedics responded. It was a routine call for Bonnie Portolano and her partner until the bizarre happened. Lisa and the accident scene was behind our ambulance, and he says, you're never going to guess what she's doing, speaking of Lisa. And I said, what? And he says, she's taking off her clothes. And it was like a few seconds later, she came walking down the side of our ambulance with not a stitch on. As I went to get her, you know, I said, Lisa, Lisa, you know, why did you take her clothes off? And she said, I wanted people to think I was crazy so then I could get some help. Paramedics took Lisa to a nearby hospital. Doctors wanted to keep her overnight for observation. But Lisa said she wanted to leave with a group of Scientologists who showed up at the hospital. Mike Rinder is the director of the Church of Scientology International. Laura Vaughn is an attorney representing Scientology. What she told the people at the hospital is she didn't want to stay. I think if the doctor could have kept her, he would have. But she expressed her desires to leave, and he had no right to keep her. Lisa's friends brought her here to the Fort Harrison Hotel, the spiritual headquarters of Scientology. She arrived in good physical condition. When she left two and a half weeks later, she was near death. What happened to Lisa McPherson during those 17 days has been the focus of an ongoing two-year criminal investigation. Scientologists say the probe is a witch hunt, but church critics see it as an opportunity to expose what they say is a dangerous cult. 
I was in it for 15 years, I, I know that it is a cult. Dennis Ehrlich says that during his days in Scientology, the standard treatment for episodes like Lisa McPherson's was isolation, a step originally prescribed by Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard. The step consists of uh, locking the person in a room uh, where they cannot communicate with anyone, no one is to communicate with them, and they're to be kept there until they supposedly come out of their psychotic state. To an average person would think isolation, that means alone. And there's nothing nefarious or wrong about her being away from work that might have been upsetting her, away from family that might have been upsetting her, with people from the church who were with her 24 hours a day, trying to get her to rest, trying to get her to eat, trying to help her in a way that was in accordance with her religious beliefs. The only glimpse into Lisa McPherson's 17 days at the Fort Harrison Hotel comes from logs kept by Scientologists who were assigned to keep watch over Lisa. Despite Scientology's efforts to keep them confidential, the courts have made them public. The logs show Lisa's physical and mental state deteriorating over those 17 days. Rest and relaxation sounds like a wonderful idea, but the records say that two days into her stay, she was spitting out food and vomiting. Four days into her stay, she was ashen-faced and feverish, and then she became violent, striking the attendants, hallucinating, thinking that she's L. Ron Hubbard, being too weak to stand, soiling herself, crying, babbling, breaking things. At that point, isn't it clear that it's not working? What's not working? Resting, taking her away from the No, I don't think that that's clear at all. I, I don't think that, that you can draw inferences or conclusions from what is said. Uh, you know, you can read other reports, and later on there is a different perspective. Of, what the of course they are. All of those things might say to you, as a non-Scientologist, this person should be committed. But as a Scientologist, they would say, that she's not to be treated like that, psychiatry is abuse. And that is their right to believe that psychiatry is abuse. It's Lisa McPherson's right to believe that and to not engage in it if she doesn't want to. Shirley Cage and Brenda Spencer, two of Lisa's closest friends in the church, agree. She would not have wanted to be treated by a psychiatrist. I know that without Even question. if it would have saved her life, even without question, I don't care what the circumstances were, she would not have wanted to be treated by a psychiatrist. When you look through Lisa McPherson's photo album, there's no hint of the tragedy to come. She was pretty and popular, a member of her high school drill team, and a good student. But when she was 14, her brother committed suicide. Ten years later, her father, a recovering alcoholic, did the same. So when a job supervisor introduced Lisa to the Church of Scientology at the age of 18, she embraced it as a surrogate family. She came home one day and told her mom and dad that... Uh, she had joined a church while they were elated. They thought that was great until they found out what it was. Eventually, Lisa even moved from her native Texas to Scientology's spiritual mecca in Clearwater, Florida. She joined a group of thousands who flock here every year to attend courses and counseling designed to overcome what they believe are traumatic memories from previous lives. In 1994, Lisa spent more than one half of her income on those courses. She worked for a publishing company with close ties to the church and helped spearhead Scientology community projects. Even her vacations were taken on the Scientology cruise ship. She believed that that church was the most important thing in the world and that the good that it was doing was something she wanted to be a part of. And she dedicated herself immensely. In the fall of 1995, Scientology declared Lisa to be clear, a mental state the church says promotes inner peace and happiness. But what no one has been able to explain is how in two short months that inner peace crumbled into emotional chaos. That answer may come out through a wrongful death lawsuit the McPherson family has filed against Scientology.